Hello and welcome back to Distributions, the video series where we talk about generalized functions. And in today's part 12, we will talk about some special distributions, namely so-called distributions of finite order. However, before we start with that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, on Patreon, here on YouTube or by other means. And please don't forget, you get additional material with the link in the description. Okay, now for the start of this video, let's take a distribution t and let's write down the standard estimate we have for distributions. It means if we fix a compact set k in Rn, we can write down an inequality. More precisely, we can estimate the absolute value of the distribution applied to a test function phi. And the only thing that goes in are the derivatives of this test function phi. You might recall, we have discussed it in part 5, and there we have seen it's a sum of a supremum norm. Namely, the supremum norm of d alpha of phi. However, you also see, we have a maximum order for the partial derivatives here, and we call this number m. And indeed, for a distribution t, such a number m always exists. And moreover, we also have a constant c involved, which is in front of the whole sum. Okay, now indeed, the only thing we need now for this estimate is that the support of phi lies in our compact set k. Moreover, we have learned in part 5 that the existence of this estimate is indeed equivalent for t being a distribution. However, here we just need the one implication, any distribution fulfills this inequality. And now in some sense, in this video, we want to minimize this constant m. However, before we do that, I first want to rewrite the right hand side as a maximum. So instead of the whole sum, I just write maximum of absolute values. Indeed, this is exactly what the supremum norm tells us. Therefore, we just go through all x in Rn. Moreover, as in the sum, we also go through all multi indices alpha. So you should see, instead of summing up all supremum norms, we now just take the largest one. Of course, we can do that and still keep the estimate here by just multiplying that with the correct factor. In other words, we will just change the constant here. Hence, instead of c, we just write c tilde. Moreover, the whole maximum here, I want to give a new name, so let's introduce a new norm. And for the moment, let's simply call it norm of phi with index m. And please note, this notation we only use for this video now. So it makes everything shorter and clearer here, and now we can ask the question, can we choose m minimally? Or to say it more precisely, can we choose m independently of the compact set k? So please recall, in general, if we make this compact set k larger, we could also increase the integer m. However, now we don't want to do that, because now we want to change the order of the quantifiers. So instead of saying that for each compact set k, we find constants m and c, such that for all test functions phi we have this estimate, now we want to say that there is such a constant m, such that for all compact sets we have the thing. And if we have exactly this, we call t a distribution of finite order. Or shorter, you could say a finite order distribution. And moreover, we can say more precisely it's of finite order m if m is the number from before. And in order to get the correct idea, let's write it down with quantifiers now. So we write there exists a non negative integer m such that for all compact sets in Rn, we find a positive constant we now call c again such that for all test functions phi, we have the estimate from before. And now we can write it in a short way. The value of the distribution t at the function phi is less or equal than c times the m norm of phi. Okay, so this is the definition and you should immediately see this is definitely stronger than the claim from above because m should work for all compact sets at once. And exactly this property brings us to a special kind of distributions we call the finite order distributions. And in fact, we already know some of them 
for example, the regular distributions. These are given by a locally integrable function f. Therefore, this duality pairing with a test function phi can be rewritten as an integral. And if we take a test function inside the compact domain k, we can just integrate over k. And then we just have f of x times phi of x. And now you see, we just take the absolute value and then we have a nice estimate for that. Namely, we just push the absolute value inside the integral and then we pull out the supremum norm of phi. And please note, the supremum norm of phi would correspond to an index m is equal to zero. In other words, here in front we have our constant c and we see we have a finite order distribution of order zero. Hence, all regular distributions are of order zero. However, it's not hard to show that also the delta distribution is of order zero. Okay, and now I can tell you that there is a very interesting fact for distributions of finite order equal to zero. And please don't forget, we already know they include very important distributions already. Therefore, it makes sense to look at the set of all distributions of order zero. However, for this nice theorem, I also want to allow that the distributions are complex valued. So they are allowed to map a test function to a complex number. But you already know, this does not change anything in any definitions. So the only thing is, either we have the absolute value in the real numbers or in the complex numbers. However, all formulas look exactly the same. Okay, so here we have the set of distributions where the order is given by zero. And on the other hand, we can look at complex measures. So more precisely, we have a map mu defined on the Borel sigma algebra. And this one I denote by curved B of Rn. If you don't know that, please watch my measure theory series. However, the notion we define there, we now extend to the complex numbers as well. Moreover, in this general context here, we also have to include the symbol infinity. In fact, I don't want to go into the details here. Let's say mu is a so-called Radon measure. This is not a complicated term, it just means it's finite on compact sets. Hence, most measures you know will fulfill that condition. And now the claim here is that there is no difference between these measures and the distributions of order zero. More precisely, we would say we have a canonical bijection between those sets. Now, I don't give you the whole proof, but we can see how this bijection should look in the one direction. Indeed, for the complex measure mu, we can define the distribution T mu. And now it will not surprise you, we will define that with an integral. Simply because we can just integrate with respect to mu. So more precisely, we have phi of x d mu x. So this is a well-defined integral and we only integrate over a compact set, namely the support of phi. So what we get out here is a finite complex number. And now it's not hard to show at all that this is indeed a distribution of order zero. Okay, and now for the end of this video, let's look at a nice example. Now, if you know some measure theory, you might know the Dirac measure defined in the origin. So delta of a set A is either zero or one. And it just depends if the origin zero lies in the set A or not. Therefore, if zero is in A, we get out the value one. And otherwise, we just get zero. So the interpretation here is simply that the whole mass, the whole charge we have lies just in one point. Therefore, the Dirac measure can describe a point charge. However, this is a concept we already know. This is something distributions should do. Therefore, let's check what the corresponding distribution T delta is. So by using the definition from above, we have this integral with respect to the Dirac measure. However, this means we only get the value at the origin out. Hence, phi of zero. In other words, our T delta here is nothing else than the delta distribution. Hence, we conclude with our bijection from before, the Dirac measure and the delta distribution are exactly the same thing. 
So for distributions of order zero, it's a matter of taste if you want to work with them or with the measures. Okay, and with that I would say this is enough for today's video. In the next videos we will talk more about operations of distributions. So I hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.